Hi everyone, welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen. We're live here and it's just me and Maria. So I hope you join us, give us lots of thumbs up and likes, let us know that you're here. Um, you may find that we won't be able to comment back because we are doing, what are we doing Maria? What is it we're doing? We're doing a, a premiere live, which basically means I'm live now but we're showing you on Thursday. So last week we did the Christmas cake, okay? So we did the Christmas cake with alcohol and normal flour and all the things with a normal Christmas cake. Very quick, very easy. Um, and today we are going to um, decorate that Christmas cake. Sorry, okay, we're gonna decorate that Christmas cake. Oh, got myself confused. We've already decorated one of those Christmas cakes. I'm now gonna to put together a gluten-free cake and we're going to put that to soak and we're going to decorate another cake. So the recipe I'm going to show you today is suitable for vegetarians, um, nut-free allergies and gluten-free, okay? So vegans, you can adapt this recipe, but you'll need to find a substitute for eggs and you'll need to find a substitute for, um, what else was there? I'll get there in a minute. Margarine, which you can use a vegan mar margarine and You'll just need to check a few of the other recipes, but basically it's the same. So let's uh, carry on, okay? So first of all, let's get the ingredients together. Let me grab a bowl, I forgot to get a bowl. So as per usual, okay, always forget something on the day. So what we're gonna do then is we are going to put our mixed fruit in. Now do watch this mixed fruit. I did say this to you last week. If you are vegan, don't just assume, or gluten-free, don't just assume that the dried mixed fruit is suitable for you. Okay, do read the packet. Depending which um, company you can get it from, it may have even been packaged in a, in a, in a factory that has nuts in the factory. So do make sure you do pick up um, you dry fruit and read the ingredients on it. Just don't take it for granted. So we're going to pop in there 450 grams of mixed fruit and then we're going to pop in 150 grams of tropical mixed fruit. Now the tropical mixed fruit has got dried bananas on, coconut, and um, it's got some mango in. So again, do read the recipe pack. Don't just assume, don't just assume that because it's fruit, it's suitable. Do read everything on there, make sure that it's fine for you. And then we are going to pop in the chopped prunes. So the prunes, you don't have to add these if you don't want to, you can add figs, and um, you can add any fruit you want. Just because I'm putting these in, doesn't mean that you have to use them. So if there's something that you would prefer, then you put that in, it's absolutely fine. Doesn't really matter, there's no rules. We're gonna pop in some cherries. Now I have to say, the cherries are not my favorite, but I always put them in because I just think that they should be in a Christmas cake. But um, I like those cherries that are in a jar, you know, with the little, with the juice, so they're called Morello cherries. And uh, you always get one with a snowball, don't you? For those who drink alcohol. But um, I always like those best, all right? So basically we've put everything in there and um, we're gonna put the zest of two oranges in. And if you remember, I forgot last week, so that poor cake has had to do without. So we've baked that cake and it's here. And um, so I'm just going to quickly put the zest of two oranges in. It's just gonna take me a little while. Just smell yummy. I'm doing it on the smaller zest, but I think I'll just move over to the bigger zest. And we'll just have the big ones. So we're also going to decorate a cake today. So the cake that I baked last week um, has, has found a home, it's been eaten. But what we're going to do is we're going to, I've already pre-done this cake already. So this one I've baked it so that we can decorate it today. And Maria's going to take it home to sunny Spain for you. Great. To try. Are you looking forward to that, Maria? Yes. Have you ever had Christmas cake, Maria? No. No? <laughs> it's going to be my first time. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I can't drink alcohol because I'm allergic to alcohol, but I must admit, I think Christmas cake tastes gorgeous with alcohol in. But uh, so this one's going to be an experience for you, Maria. 
okay, orange juice we're going to put in. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the alcohol today. So last week we used um, rum, okay, but you can use brandy or whiskey or a mixture. It's entirely up to you. There's no rules. Um, but today we're going to use orange juice. Now, you can use orange juice, apple juice, cranberry juice. You can use cool brew, brew tea. It really is up to you. And I have to say, I'm not very good at grating an orange. So, oh, look at this. oven on and the oven on is on the temperature of let me just check what's the temperature I can't remember I think it's on 160 let's see 140 I'm going to cook it nice and slow I'm going to cook it nice and slow for two hours uh, what I would suggest you do is depending on how your oven is after two hours, do check it and then keep cooking just for every 10 minutes because this recipe says bake for two and a half hours, but um, I found that I maybe over baked it. It feels great, but until Maria tastes it and Laura tastes the one at home, I'm never actually going to really know what it's like, mm -hmm. but I know the ones that I've done in the past have been super. So, right, okay, so I'm bored with that now. Should maybe have prepared that sooner. So we're going to mix that in. I'm just going to mix that in. And then what we're going to use is instead of alcohol, we're going to use orange juice. And we're going to use 300 mils of orange juice. So. Now, in the last recipe I showed you last week, because it was alcohol, I asked you to leave the recipe at the actual mix for a week. Um, I don't want you to leave this one for a week, I just want you to leave overnight in the fridge. Um, simply, simply because I don't know how the orange juice will be if I left it for a week, and I don't want you all complaining that you've ruined your fruit. So I think the best thing to do, we'll play safe, let's pop it, pot it, put it in here, and then we'll just leave it in overnight. So during the day today, so I'm going to leave this here. When I finish the live, I'm going to give it a shake. And then later on in a couple of hours, I'll give it another shake. Then tomorrow morning, I'm going to give it a shake again. And then I'm actually going to bake it tomorrow afternoon. We've done one already, but as I say, I can't tell you what it's like. You'll also notice I've not put any nuts in this recipe as well, because I'm using this recipe as a nut-free recipe. So let me just get the wind fill. Here, there it is. It's always under your nose. So if you want to ask questions, feel free to ask questions. Uh, we are going to answer them. So we start our warehouse refit tomorrow. So the actual warehouse we refit actually means dismantling the warehouse, which is going to be loads of fun. So by Thursday, we are going to be up to our ears in it. So um, what I'll do is when I come home Thursday night, I will have a look at this and then I'll answer all your live questions for you. Um, the recipe is on the recipe website. Maria and I have got ourselves organized. I've also got made sure that the recipe for last week's Christmas cake is on the website as well. The only thing I haven't put on there is the actual decorations because decorations is down to personal choice. So this is just the recipe for the cake and um, decorations is down to personal choice. That's entirely up to you. We are going to use the sweet stamps again, but I'm going to use a different font. I'm going to use the ones from the Elegant range. They're back in stock. I'm going to use a couple of numbers as well. So just give it a nice little shake. Yep, let's make sure it's really shook up. See, so can you see? Yep, brilliant. So we're going to leave that to one side. I'm actually going to put this in the fridge to soak because it's got the orange juice in. I really don't want it to go off. So let me just pop this in the fridge. It's 
So I've got to ask Maria questions. Right, okay. So we have done one already previously and uh, it's in the bowl ready and we are going to get that in the mixing bowl now. So first of all, wait a minute, we are going to use gluten-free flour. So do the cake mix. So let me just weigh out the flour and put all the ingredients together. And I'll just get another smaller bowl so that you can see. So are we in the centre there, Maria? Yes. Can we see? Yes. Maria's so funny because she's doing the camera today and you know she's normally over my shoulder. Well, I don't need her to film this and make a little mini video. Um, I think this live will be sufficient. So uh, she goes, oh, Carol, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So she's so used to showing Laura and Karen and anybody else how to set up the cameras and use the cameras. She's actually never used them herself. Well, not for a long time, anyhow. So uh, hello, Maria, you're going to say hello. Hi. So make sure you do some shout outs, make sure you get those thumbs up. So Laura is in the office busy working. So we're going to make the cake mix, okay? So we need um, 175 grams of stalk block and I will just this up. I'm just going to chop this up one second. Let's move that bowl out of the way. So it's 175 grams of stalk block. You can use any margarine of choice if you want to. Um, a Christmas cake always says butter, but uh, you don't have to use butter. You can use margarine. And for those of you that are on a, well, this is suitable for vegetarian stalk block. Uh, for vegans, maybe you might want to use pure or one of those uh, dairy-free margarines. So we're just going to pop that in the bowl. Move that out of the way. And then we need 150 grams of brown sugar. Let me just get a cloth for a moment. Stick your hands. So we're going to use 175 grams of uh, brown sugar as well. Put that in there. This is the packet we opened before. I've got so many half packets. It's so bad when I'm doing the Facebook lives. I just keep opening new packets of things. So we need 175 grams. You can use a light brown sugar if you want to. I wouldn't use a white sugar. The idea of a, a Christmas cake is meant to be dark in colour. So, okay. that. that was faster. Pardon? That was faster. It was faster, was it? Yes. We're opening it rather yes. than looking for scissors. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we go. I've actually put a little bit too much in. I should have opened the bag properly. Anyhow, nothing like making a nice royal mess while you're here. Mm -hmm. Right, I think we've got about a of sugar we've got. And that's going to go into the mixer and then while that's in the mixer so sorry guys i've got to turn this on and make some noise so we'll weigh out all the other ingredients as well so you put this on so we're just going to weigh out the other ingredients while we're mixing those together But otherwise three eggs but three large eggs you can weigh your eggs if you want to and if you, if you want to weigh your eggs to be exact then you want 175 grams of eggs 
So I just find sometimes it's a bit difficult to get the exact amount of eggs. So we're going to use gluten-free flour here. there and it's because I forgot to put it in so there's no problems no hardship done so we're just going to pop it in the bowl and mix it up with this it's always nice to have a bit of ginger and you can chop it smaller than this I've chopped it quite chunky so uh, whoever gets this Christmas cake I hope they like it well to be fair they've been chunky in all of them so let's cover that back up Shake it, shake it. All about. <laughs> Let's get out of the fridge. That can stay there till tomorrow and we'll bake that one tomorrow. So we're going to do this one now. So let's just uh, scrape down our bowl just so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so there's the mixing. So we really do need to give this a good beat because can you see there that the butter's not quite in? Yes. Yeah. So we really do need to make sure that we give this a good beat. Now only beat it while it's got the sugar and the um, butter in or margarine, whatever you've chosen. So do remember that both recipes are on the website. Okay. I've called them Carol's Easy Christmas Cake Recipe because they are really easy. And then um, this one is suitable for vegetarians, nut-free and gluten-free diet. So you can just swap it. So if you want nuts, if you, if you don't need the nut, if you need the nut element and you don't have a nut-free diet, then you just throw nuts in, that's fine. And um, if you want to add alcohol, because you just want to keep it as a gluten-free cake, you can add alcohol. But I just thought for this recipe, we'll eliminate everything, makes it easier, and then you can add the things that you want to add. So let me just turn this up again. Can you see that Maria? Let me see. So in the meantime, I'm going to just pack the next. So I'm just 
stirring these together. So the plain flour, the gluten-free flour, the spices, the mixed spice and the cinnamon, cinnamon, just mixing in into the flour. Okay. I'm going to craft three large eggs. took advantage of the sale okay and um, I can't wait to show you some other lives of us redoing the warehouse we're so excited we're hoping it's going to make our life a lot easier we have been actually on top of each other for the last definitely the last two years we've actually been in the sugar and crumbs warehouse now um, three years okay we're now into our fourth year and we're in our fifth year of business trading we started off sugar and crumbs here at the house I started, um, let me just get a spatula in there. I started making the blends for the flavoured icing sugar here in the house and, um, and then in the main house actually. And then we moved into this part of the house, the annex. And this room actually had two wall, had a wall in it. So one part was for blending. And this section we were in here is where we did the bagging and the heat sealing. And next door, I've got an office and that was our warehouse. And then we had to put containers on the drive. Can you imagine the neighbors, what they must've thought? Two big kids. We had one container, filled that. Then we got a second container, filled that. And John and I thought, you know what? We really got to move on. And we do live on a nice lane, so but you never see anybody on our lane until we had a delivery. As soon as we had a delivery of ice and sugar and that Arctic lorry came down our lane, I tell you, every one of the neighbours must have come out. But it nev they never came out unless that lorry came down. So uh, we decided it was time to move. So we moved to our premises in Brebury and we've stayed there. And um, I've still got the original pictures and I keep saying I'm going to share them with you and I will share them with you. But I never, ever thought that we would fill it. You know, I remember walking in there and thinking, this is a dream. We'll never fill it. And, um, and now we've got five staff working in one office. So we're on top of each other in the office, which is why uh, Maria and I come to the house office sometimes, or John and Maria come to the house office. Uh, sometimes we're all down there in Brevary, so all those click and clack customers see us all down there. And, um, and then in the warehouse and production, that's a little bit crazy in there as well because we're doing both because we actually manufacture our sugars. We don't actually send them out. And uh, when I used to make them here, I used to make them in a very small blender. It was a one kilo blender. So can you imagine how many I had to make? And then we upgraded to three kilo blenders. And then when we went to Brebury, we bought a blender called Big Bertha and she's a 10 kilo blender. And now we're on a 100 kilo ribbon blender. So um, it's quite fascinating to see how we've gone. I only wish I'd taken pictures of everything along the way, but unfortunately I didn't, because you just don't know where you're going to be, do you? So anyhow, so the eggs are in the mix. I'm not sure whether you can see in there. Can you see in there, Maria? Yes. Yeah. So you can see the mix. That's all nicely incorporated. So I'm now just going to add two large tablespoons of treacle. Now somebody gave me a hot tip last week and I can't remember what it is. So you know what, we're gonna to have to do this the hard way. So somebody gave me a hot tip and I'm sure they said, in fact, I'm sure they said, dip the spoon in olive oil. Is that what they said, Maria? I can't remember. Mm. Well, we're gonna to have to do it the hard way because as much as I think that's a great idea, I'm not sure I want to put olive oil spoon in my treacle. So I'm just going to pop that in. And what is that? It's like caramel? Um, well, to be fair, 
you use it mainly, well, we use it here in the UK to make dark chocolate cake, mark dark cake with. Mm -hmm. So there's a lovely cake that we make at Halloween time and um, we usually put it in there. It's, um, I can't think what the name is of it now, but I remember um, eating it when I was a little girl. Absolutely loved it. Um, it'll come to me in a minute. I can't believe it. Come on, you lot. Tell me what it is. Uh, parking. That's it. Parking cake. Oh, I love that stuff. And you always eat it at, around Halloween time. So you use it for them. And um, what else have we used to use this for? Come on, guys, because I, I can only think of two things at the moment. But I know we use it for other things. So uh, let's see if you're interacting with this live today. So let's just get another spoon. But it's really funny, you only use it for a few things. Oh, you make treacle with it as well. So, um, have you ever had treacle, Maria? No. Treacle sweets? No. Right, well, I used to make treacle sweets with it as well. So, uh, but it's really funny, you always, everybody I know who uses this stuff, they, all, they never use the whole tin, Maria. So what happens, and I'm sure you lot agree as well, but um, you never use the whole tin and um, you end up coming using the tin again in the second year. So let me just get rid of all this a bit. And we're back. Are you going from one to the other, Maria? The mixer and then to me. Just seeing how her camera skills are. <laughs> but they're not being on the camera for a long while. No. We'll just see what she's up to. So. So those of you who can see in the bowl now, we'll see that all that treacle is around the edge of the bowl, so we're gonna to have to scrape down. So let's scrape down, and it's all over the whisk, because I've got to get it all off the whisk. And you can see how it's just curdled a little bit. Yes. Don't panic about that. There's no problem. Okay. So, and the, all the treacle just scrapes off the side, really very easily, look. Can you see how it's scraping off the side? Yes. So it's really very easy. And what we'll do is, just to save it a little bit, and you don't have to do this, just some people panic. We'll put a tablespoonful of the flour in. There we go. Yeah, we don't actually have to have those sweeps back on again. over to here so bye bye mixer you're done and just let me just go and wash my hands a moment and my cloth tea towel right okay we're going to use karen davies mold as well today so let me get that out of the way let's get all the rubbish out of the way I love Karen Davies moulds, they're so good. Okay, so we've now got our flour. I'm gonna tip that into the bowl and we're gonna fold that in to the cake mix. So we're just gonna fold that in to the cake mix. So don't stir, just lift and fold, lift and fold till it's all incorporated. It smells amazing. It smells gorgeous, doesn't mm -hmm. it? it is. And you're taking, oh no, you're taking the, one, the other one, but you're taking the same recipe home with you, but you're taking the other one home. The one we're gonna decorate today. So I'm gonna end up with a load of spare Christmas cakes and I don't know who I'm gonna give them to. I'm gonna take one to Ireland anyhow. So Laura's got one, Maria's gonna have one, this one, Michael? I think I might give this one to Michael, our doggy walk. That's a good idea because I'm sure the Irish contingency will want alcohol in theirs. So, <laughs> so yes. So, um, I have a doggy walker called Michael, who's a great guy, and um, he's got elderly parents. I think his father is 96, and his mother is, I don't think she's turned 90 yet, I think she's 88. So, um, but they're both fit and strong. And um, I'm sure he's gonna love that for Christmas. He's not gonna cake off us for a while, has he? So this was all the ingredients, and we are now just going to put the cake mix in. So, 
and that's a cake mix. All going in. Make sure you get every last drop in. Don't miss any. Can you see okay, Maria? Yes. Did any of you make the recipe cake for last week, the one with the alcohol in? Right. If you did, share pictures. I think I'm going to try it at home. Are you going to try it, Maria? Yeah? Yes. Good. Because I think my mother is going to love that one. I think she is. Do you know what I like? I just love the cake. I just love this cake with um with the marzi pan on mm. so look at all that lovely fruit how good is that yes. yeah you've got banana chips in there everything so and you can adapt it to have any fruit that you want in it really right so we've lifted all that up so let's grease our tin do a square tin and uh, let me get some butter out. So I haven't got any square ones of these. Pick these up from Lakeland, so we'll just use a round one. It's fine. Don't worry. I'm going to use a little knob of butter just to go all the way around. Make sure we protect the cake. And what I'll do is, I'll do a live and we'll decorate this square cake next week as well. So, so I meant to tell you, got myself all confused uh, last night on, uh, on, on Monday's live. So um, we have got video in, but we're actually now gonna make it a Christmas party because somehow I got myself muddled up and um, I thought I had a free space. So I said to Baking Nana, who is Jackie Heaton, and Rob Allen, listen, do you want to come in? You've not been in for a while. And they said yes, and we were as excited about having those in. And then um, I got talking to Maria and she started telling me about Vidya coming in. I completely forgot about Rob and Jackie, so how bad is that? So we're actually going to have a really good addition on Monday. It's going to be exciting. In fact, it's going to be crazy. Can you imagine Jackie, Vidya, Rob and myself in the kitchen here? So Rob is going to make a chocolate cake, a um, chocolate log. Okay, so he's going to show you how to make that using our cocoa powders and chocolate icing sugar. Jackie is going to make, um, I think she's going to make um, a big giant cupcake, but we're going to turn it into a Christmas tree. And Vidya is making shortbread biscuits and I might let her let loose on the airbrush. We'll see how it goes, how much mess we're making. So there we go, so we've got a nice greased tin, yeah? Now, if it's well greased, you can actually leave it at that, but I'm gonna put some paper around it as well. Just find the paper. So I'm doing the same trick as I did last week. I uh, just greased it before I actually measured the paper. So we're just gonna put one of these in. So I know it's round, but that doesn't really matter. I know it's round, that doesn't matter, but it just helps. And then we're going to put this in. So we're just gonna sit this in here. And go all the way round. And as I say, you don't need to use this, but I just like using it, especially on a fruit cake. And what is that for? It's, well, it's actually, you can have this parchment paper or greaseproof paper. Let me just see what they said, what do they call it? Baking parchment, mm. that's what it is. But all it is, it's basically to stop your cake sticking in the tin. Mm. So you can just peel it off, it just slips out. And then we're gonna put all the mix in. Now, look at that, one mix. Okay, it's a huge mix. I'm gonna put it in here. There we go. I'm get all of it in. I have to tell you, it smells so good. It 
So this recipe, okay, you can adapt. I've actually put it on as Carol's easy um, Christmas cake recipe. And just let me get a spatula again. It's Carol's easy Christmas cake recipe. But this one I've put as nut free, alcohol free and gluten free. Okay, so, but if you are following this recipe and you only want to be gluten free, then feel free to swap the juice, okay, for alcohol. If you want nuts in it and you don't need to have a nut free recipe, then add nuts to it. If you want everything, go to Carol's easy Christmas cake recipe. So all we're doing now is we're spreading this out in the pan. And we're just gonna make a little center. There we go. And we're gonna pop that in the oven for one and a half hours. We're gonna check it then. We're gonna check it at two hours and then we'll check it at 10 minute intervals. So this is going in the oven now on 140. Clean all this up. Let's get rid of the mixer out of the way. Let's get all this cleaned up and then let's start decorating this cake. Okay. Maria, do you want this out of the way? Yes. Let me just get this out of the way. There we go. So, how are you enjoying this live? Is it good? Sorry, the camera's turned round. Don't wish we camera we on. <laughs> so, how are you enjoying this live? <laughs> so, let me get rid of all the rubbish. Let's get rid of that. Right over here. What do you think? So I said to you last week that I was going to make one and bake it ready to decorate for today. So I've done that. I'm going to get it out of the tin. And I'm just going to get some treks for this as well. So for my board. So I'm just going to get some treks for my board just so that I can roll out the sugar paste. So, first of all, we've got to roll out the marzipan. And here's our cake. All the rubbish and take that out. Take this off so you can see it. And then look how lovely and dark that is. Mm. That's because we've used treacle. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to put this on here out of the way a moment. Now, oh, it back on here again now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I'm just going to get myself a board as well. Just hang on a second. Some round boards. Round boards that are now long pin. So we've got the round board and a rolling pin. So first of all, let's cover our, well, our cake. So we'll get the marzipan out. So for those of you who are on a nut-free diet, okay, you can make your own marzipan. And at the bottom of the recipe, uh, at the bottom of the recipe here, I've actually added a recipe on making marzipan using semolina. So follow that right down to the bottom of the page and you'll see that there, okay? Um, I love this particular marzipan. Um, it's a white one. Do you remember it used to be really yellowy? But this one I really do like. So you need about 500 grams.
Oh, I'm just going to add a good chunk to it. It doesn't matter if we've got extra, we can wrap it all up after. I'd rather have more than less. So let's just get that kneaded in here. Okay. Now, last week I did it round the sides. This week I'm going to roll it so that it goes all the way over. So that's going to be fun. Hey, Maria? <laughs> you get nervous for me, Maria. Yes. I'm nervous for me as well. <laughs> I will trust. Yeah. <laughs> so. Round. Uh, now, this acrylic roller, some of you are going to say, where do you get these from? So because we're having a refurbishment refit, I have got new goods coming in, but I'm not going to put them on the website yet until all the new, um, all the new racking is in, but we're going to be stocking these. So you're going to love these. Yes. Just turn it round. Okay. The only reason you lift it up is, is that when you're rolling, one you want to just turn it round so it's all even. And uh, two, because you do get thicker sides than others. And the roundness doesn't always stay round. So it's just good just to keep lifting it up. And you see by using treks, it didn't... Uh, yeah, doesn't stick. So we're just going to roll this nicely all the way round. And then I am going to get my cake, bring it over to here. And I'm just going to use this board for the moment. So, I've done a boo boo there. I'm going to show you this now. <laughs> so, board. Okay. Cake. Yeah. So, we're going to put that on there for the moment. Just so you can see. Let's lift over. Oh, sorry. Apricot jam. Palette knife again. What I'm going to do is, um, let me just see which camera you can see on Maria. Mm. Can you see there? Can yes, turn that just there? about. What about if you turn that there? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, we have to improvise in this kitchen. So, I'm just going to put apricot cap jam. Do sieve the jam, okay? This one has got lumps in it, so we may have to take them off. Which is that one can come off. Okay. You don't have to use apricot jam, and I, I didn't really know why we do use it, but somebody said last week it's because it's a milder flavour. But, uh, and somebody said last week that they use cherry jam. So any lumps, just take off. Oops, put it back on again. So, can you see my little stand here? <laughs> <laughs> Called improvising. This is just so you guys can uh, use it. And I've got to, you, you guys can see it. And I've got to be able to think on my feet so that when I'm doing these lives, I don't always think of everything that we need in the kitchen. So, I spend enough time running backwards and forwards to cupboards. So, uh, you know what? Out of speed, we're just going to use this one. I love watching you doing that. Do you? Yes. Is it therapeutic? Yes. Feels nice doing this as well. It's going to be more fun, Maria, me trying to get this on here. Yes. So, <laughs> I know you're all waiting for it. <laughs> so, I think I've got it all coated. It might be just a bit here that's not coated.
And this jam will also help keep it moist as well, because it's nice. Give it a nice seal. Right, okay, let's get rid of that. And that. So this is for the fun bit guys, okay? Because I've now got a cake up here and I've got marzipan down here. So, how are we gonna do this? Well, what we're going to do is, I'm going to put it on my baking tray. There. Sorry, shouldn't lick my fingers. Mm -hmm. So let me just wipe my fingers there before somebody goes. Just remember when you're in this kitchen, what goes on in this kitchen stays in this kitchen. Mm -hmm. This is my kitchen. None of this food is going to anybody unless it's a friend of mine. And if they want it, they want it, they can have it. And Maria's quite happy that I've licked my thumb. Yes, I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> right, just forget yourself at times. So what we're gonna do is, we're lifting this up. You're impressed, look at that. We're gonna put our board there. And then we are going to roll over. Oh yes. Yeah. Did that happen, Maria? Crikey. Even I'm impressed with myself, <laughs> Maria. So, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> so let's just uh, tuck it down. Crikey, Maria, can you believe it? It's you, <laughs> I'm well pleased. Do you lot please? Was you all holding your breath then? Thinking, oh God, here she goes. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. Nice and flat. That's good. Let me just get another patch it on there. Cut it there, all the way around. Are you enjoying yourself, Maria? Yes. It's quite nice just me and you in the kitchen, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Laura will be missing it out, won't she? <laughs> so there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this marzipan up and I'll be able to reuse this on the next cake. So I'll just whack it in this... Uh, original packaging for now and then I'll clean film it all up properly after. Okay, so that's not too bad is it? It's beautiful. Yeah. So we're a bit short on size but but otherwise are we okay? We're we happy with that? Yes. We're just a little bit short on that side but who are cares? Are we done? Who cares? We're a little bit short on that side. But who cares? Yes, that'd be fine. No, we don't care, do we? You don't care, do you, Maria? No. Just going home to your house. <laughs> right, okay, so we've got brown sugar paste now. So we've got brown sugar paste now, and I'm going to use the Karen Davies mold for this. So let me just unwrap some of this. I'm going to use a woodland bark mould. To be fair, one. I love this mould. Oh, do you? The bark one? Why? Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. I think it's easy to use and it looks really oh, nice. Easy to use. It's incredibly easy to use. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, here it is. Here is the mould that we're going to use. Right. Got bits of sugar paste in it already. So, there we go. So the good thing with the moulds are you don't always need to wash them out. Do you know what I mean? Don't get fixated about keep washing them out. You know, you just you only really need to keep washing them out if you're using loads of different sugar paste and it all gets gulped up. But uh, to be fair, the sugar paste goes in that quick and comes out that quick. So I just need to get some water for here. Yes, this cake is going to be for me. Yeah, <laughs> you're not sharing it, Maria. Maybe a slice. It's too big for you, all this. No. Yes, it is. 
too big for you. So what we'll do is, so we'll just make it into a sausage shape. Gonna get our wall out again. Move the water out of the way. And then we're just gonna flatten it out. So the brown that we're using here is a chocolate brown sugar paste from Sugar Paste Direct. I have to tell you, it's lovely. And we're gonna use the Cool Pit White that we used last week. So the reason I'm rolling it out is so that we can put it into Karen's moulds. Now Karen does make, give you the exact measurements, but I'm not one for following all the instructions properly, as you well know. So we're just going to pop it into her mould. I'm going to start at this end with that. Where's that knife? Where's that? Um, just had it before. So don't ever use a proper knife on, on any mould. Okay, so we're just going to use this here. And then we are just going to cut down. Cut down. We'll take the top off. We're going to have to make a few of these to go all the way around this cake. Karen's probably hyperventilating as I'm doing this. In fact, she never rang me last week. She must have closed her eyes. Hey, Karen. What do you think, Karen? Did you see it last week? But, so here we go. So we're just going to pop the mould in. Now, as you can see, it's far too thick. So Karen moulds are great. So that just shows you don't actually need that much so we're just going to roll it out, which is great. It makes it very easy on your sugar paste. It makes your sugar paste go a lot further. So I'm so just going to see how much, see how much extra again I've got just for cutting it off. It's always sugar paste go a lot further, which is brilliant. So we've got to do a few of these. And even then I think that's probably a little bit too much. But it'll have to do. So I just rub my hands over it there. Always make sure it's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to rub my hands over it. Yeah, and then watch how easy this bad boy is to fall out. Look at that. Mm. How lovely is that? It's quite therapeutic, that, isn't it? And do you know what? Did you notice something? I didn't dust it from last time. Look how good that was. So we're just going to have one of those there. I didn't even dust it from last time. That's how good her moulds are. So what you're meant to do is give it a light dusting, tap it all out, and then you'll start again. So we've got one there. So we're going to do this again. We're going to do this again a few times. I think we're probably going to have to do it three or four times. So let's roll it out. Try and roll it out a bit thinner this time. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the sugar paste into place. It's another way of doing it. So we can pull it all into place. Stretch it along. Move it round. There you go. When you've used the mould once or twice, you sort of then get an idea of how much you need to have in there. It's just the first one always gets me. So I'm just going to rub that across. But you're all down to have a go at that, are you, Maria? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stroke the sugar paste. <laughs> okay, so you'll notice I'm not using a sharp knife. Do not use a sharp knife on these moulds. Okay, and again. Oops, cracky. It's fell out before I even had a chance to show you. There you go. Number two. So I'll brush off the uh, sugar paste. Brush 
strip the cornflour afterwards. Let's do number three. I think we'll have enough with three if I'm really honest. So let me get a bit more brown. So this is Sugar Paste Direct Chocolate Brown and it will go darker as it's out. It's only because I've been kneading it. So, and I have to say it tastes lovely this stuff. So hope you're enjoying this live today, okay? Do ask questions. Laura's not here to shout out questions. And Maria hasn't got a camera in my face, which is great. <laughs> Isn't it, Maria? Yes. Is it nice just for you to sit down today, Maria? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> it's more good for day one. Yeah? You know how, how easy Laura's got it. She just sits and watch Laura, doesn't she? <laughs> eh? Should we tell everyone Laura does no work? <laughs> no. <laughs> She does work hard, yes. does our Laura. She looks after all you lot. We're carried on customer services. Cat Laura does all the trade orders and anybody from abroad who uh, wants anything, send it out to them. Laura deals with all that. And obviously she comes over and looks after the camera system. But you've got to take the mickey while she's not here, haven't you? <laughs> okay. So here we go. Let's give it a rub. So again, got our three pieces. And we're liking this, Maria. Are you quite yes. happy? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. So now we've got our Christmas cake. So let's bring our Christmas cake over here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop our fingers in some water just to wet this a little bit. Okay. So sorry if you can hear me sniffling. I still have my cold. I think I'm into about week six, week seven now. So uh, I keep waking up thinking it's gone and it hasn't. So what we're gonna do is, all technical, just like I showed you last week. So I'm just going to take my measurement there of how much, let me just check that that's right. So how much of this that we want? So we want that from there. And then I'm going to draw a line like that. It's great, this technical stuff, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've still got a little bit too much, so a bit long. So let's just trim it again. Okay. Gonna do is we're just going to put it around the cake like this. There we go. So don't squash it because you don't want to squash the pattern out. There you go. And we'll get the next piece. It's beautiful. Yeah, you like it? Yes. We're just going to do our technical measurements again. I love being all technical. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to put this one up to here, there we go, it's just so easy. Is it all down to the bottom Maria? I can't see. No, but it's fine. Is it down to the bottom there? Yes, yes, yeah. it's perfect. Good, okay. Then we're going to do the next one. And again, technical measurement, there we are. All the professionals now will be looking at this going, is this woman bonkers? <laughs> I, I like being bonkers. I like being Karen McFarland in my own kitchen, doing my own thing. Yeah. So, got a tiny little gap there, don't worry, because we're just going to ease those together there. So we're going to ease that together there. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Now this chocolate's not going to waste because we're going to cover our board with it. So we just mould it together a minute, and we're going to put white over the top of here. So let me just knead this together so it's all there because we're going to use this again in a minute. So 
just put that to one side. So, how does that look? Beautiful. Looks okay, doesn't it? Yes. So let me just get my uh, Dresden tool out a moment. Use the FMM boning tool, uh, not boning tool, dressing tool. So all we're going to do is where the joins are there. I'm just going to stick it together a little bit. Woodland, anyhow. Let's have a look at this. And then where I've folded that together there. We're just going to draw some lines. Let's blend it in. I'm going to do the same there. Yeah, does that hide it? And I've done that one already. Super. Right. That one could do with being a bit neater. Sorry, Marie, I nearly didn't have a cake. <laughs> just hang on a second. So let me just do this. It's, it's a much easier if I can do it by looking at it. So where I joined it before, and it wasn't too good. Just, just draw a few more lines up there. There you go. I don't really see that anymore. Right, so let's get our white out. Let's leave that there. Just put it on the hands a minute. Now, last week I used um, Coolpits White, so I'm going to use that again today. <sighs> I'm not going to fight with this big knot, I'll put it in the bag after. So this stuff was just so easy to use, this stuff. I'm just going to cut some off. Again, I'm not measuring, I'm just going to eyeball it, as they say. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to just knead this together. So this is Cool Pit's um, Brilliant White Sugar Paste. I have to tell you, it smells great, tastes great, very easy to use. So, are you enjoying this live, everyone? Hope so. It's really funny, just me and Maria here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> me doing all the work. Are you enjoying yourself relaxing, Maria? Hey, yes. anything you like? Biscuits, sweeties, anything? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> that cake, I want that cake. Yes, but you do know you can't eat this till Christmas, Maria. Oof. So she's got to take this to Spain. I want her to show me on Christmas Day so that I know that she hasn't been going into it. We try. So it will stay lovely and fresh in the box. So all she needs to do, once it's got all the sugar paste on it, all the preservatives will stay in it, so it's fine. So, so I've got a little bit of chocolate in there. Let's take that out. If there's any chocolate in here, we're not gonna worry about it because we'll be able to cover it up. So I'm not really making any new decorations. I showed you how to make them last week and I've still got some spare. So I'm gonna use those today. So we're just going to cut out the chocolate bits that we've got here, stuck into it. I'm going to roll this out. So this pastry mat we do sell, okay. This is a really, really extra large one. So I don't actually sell this one, but if you do want it, I can get it for you on special request. This one really just works on a really big worktop. And the worktop we've got here in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen is um, a double worktop, whereas the one that you want really is for a single worktop, because there's no point in having it if it's going to be dangling over the edge. So look how lovely and white the sugar paste is, it's just so lovely. So, and I've not had any elephant skin with either of these. I know some of you do complain that you get elephant skin in some of your sugar pastes, but I've never had any problems with any of these. So you'll see that I'm just rolling this randomly. And what we're gonna do now is we are just going to just do this shape. 
I know what you're going to do. Do you? Oh, I love it. I just have to hope it's going to fit the cake, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit worried about this side. <laughs> I think I might have just gone a bit mud that side. So let's just shape it off there. So it's this shape in here, you just don't get too wound up with it. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lift it off to over here. Look at our cake. And I'm going to pray to the Lord that I have done it big enough to go over this one. Yeah. Yay. I have. How good is that? Mm -hmm. There you go. So this is our snow over our cake, Maria. Just one second, let me get a cloth. Right, get the cloth. So we've got some snow dangling a bit longer than we want to here. So I'm gonna get the scissors, which I had over here before, where are they? Oh, I don't know if you can yeah. there they are. So all I'm going to do is just going to cut round. So I'm just going to cut round, just make it a bit more rounder. Stick it in there. Stick it in there. So Maria, how's that looking? Really I can't really tell. Is it looking okay? Yes. Okay. It's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you like it? Ooh. I love it. <laughs> She's so easy to please. Now do remember guys, I'm not a professional. So I just like baking for fun. I like baking with our products just to show you how to use them. I don't always use them the correctly. I'm actually just showing you my way of using them. When you become professional and top, top notch, you know what? You can go out and give lessons to everybody, but at the moment I'm teaching all those home bakers who are scared of trying new things or a bit nervous or they're just wondering whether they're doing it right. And you know what, just give people confidence and give them, get them a chance to have a go. And a lot of the things that I do here in the kitchen, I've actually usually never done before. So I'm quite happy with that actually. Do you think that's okay? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to... It doesn't matter if it's not stuck because there's sugar paste all underneath. It's, it's just going to be stuck on the top here. So let's get our board. So I've just got to wipe this one. Put some more treks on. And then we're going to cover our board. Yeah? There we go. And then we're going to use the Amy Sweet stamps. And we're going to decorate up the board. So we're back to the brown sugar paste again. Let's get this lot out of the way. So I've got brown in the white and white in the brown, you know how it goes. So we're just gonna roll this out. And I think my board is 12 inches, I'll just double check. Is that a 12 inch board? Yes it is, that's what we want to cover. And I'm gonna use a different style and instead of putting Merry Christmas, I'm just going to put Christmas, so we'll do it, I put Christmas 2018 on this one. So I'm just going to show you some of the numbers as well. Okay. So. Let's just get them all in. So I know some of you guys, when you roll, you do all this stuff and you go up and down. I'm not very good at that. So mine is never always the smoothest one, but I get there in the end. That's all that really matters to me. So, so for you guys who worry because it's not completely flat, don't worry about it. There's no point getting worried about it. You know what? Hide it with the decoration. 
That's what we're going to do. Thin this out a bit. So for your boards, I mean this is quite an expensive sugar paste to use for your boards. Personally, I'd get down to your local supermarket and buy a cheap paste, you know, one that's just really cheap to cover your boards with. And the secret of the Amy Sweet stamps is some of you have been having problems with them. Um, and the fact that you're saying they're really hard to impress. They're not hard to impress. You've probably left your sugar paste to dry. So you must put it, put the imprint, the, um, you must use the embossers, okay, the stamps, while the sugar paste is soft. So let's see how we're doing here. Let's get my board. We're nearly there, we're not far off. So how long have we been going with this live, Maria, then? Just me and you? <gasps> hey? <laughs> Why? Do you know how many hours we've been going? Yes, sorry. Uh, one hour and 12 minutes. Oh, this could be a quick live. Yes. So you'll see that I'm just rubbing my hands over here. So now I'm going to get ready to lift this up. Okay. So just hold that there. Let's get the board. I'm going to wet the board. You just need to wet the board with a little dust in the water. Okay. I'm going to get the sugar paste up, put the board underneath, and then we are going to take it right over. Now, I'm just missing that little edge over there. So I'm just going to just cutting it with my angled palette knife. Don't use a knife because th these palette knives are not sharp but they do the job. That's all you need to do. I'm using a rose gold board so I don't have to put a ribbon on. So we've just got missed a little bit of the board there, but I'm not going to worry about that because I'm just going to smooth it out and when I smooth it out, it will stretch a little bit. Let me just use a smooth for a moment. You see, that's just taking it to the end there. Yes. taking it to the end. Are you excited about your cake, Maria? I look. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Hey, looks covered. Whoops, covered. Get the Amy Sweet stamps out. So Maria, because we did Merry Christmas on Laura's cake last week, we're not going to do that on yours because I want to use the numbers. Okay. So I'm just going to put Christmas on for 2018. You happy with that? Yes. Pretty good. Right. So in the sweet stamp range, okay, there's loads and loads of different stamps. And the ones that we're going to use today is the elegant font. So I did explain which camera are we on? Please run this one. Right. Go. I can 
never find these. You know when I do them upside down, I can never find them. There we go. Okay. So, Amy Sweet Stamps or Sweet Stamps Amy Cakes, whichever. Okay, she does a full wide wet range. She does um, she does block, which is let me just show you a few of them actually. So the pistachio set, we do an uppercase and a lowercase. Okay, so we sell them in the we sell them in the alphabets as one set. Now you can buy them off Amy's site direct as individual sets, but I sell them as a set because I think it's much nicer. In fact, I'll bring it over here to this camera. I think these sets are much nicer if you have the upper and the lower case. Okay, so you always start off with a capital letter and then finish off the word with the small and lowercase letters. And uh, the, the pistachio pads are actually called the curly range. So we've put a little label on there so that you know pistachio pad and it's the curly range. We've also got the coral set and that's the set that I used on Laura's cake last week. And this is called the stylish range. We do numbers in that as well. Not sure if I've got the numbers though. I haven't got the numbers for that set. Then we do the handwritten range, okay? Same, they come in the upper and lower case. They also come with a set of numbers separately as well. These are on the mint pad and they're handwritten. And Amy says these are the easiest ones to use. But to be fair, I think she's just got to play with them. This set is the elegant set. Now this set here is called the classic set. Now in this set, you get the upper case, the lower case, you get the numbers, you get the symbols, you know, you got the ampersand, you got the question mark, the exclamation mark, the at sign, um, the at sign, you get two A's, two O's, I think that is. Yeah, you get a couple of additional extra letters in here. So that pad there has got everything on it, okay? And then this one here is the cookie one. So this is perfect for you doing your cupcakes your cookies, and again, that's got the whole set. That's got the uppercase, the lowercase, the numbers, the symbols, everything. So what we're going to do now is, let me just get out a tool, put it back in my box. So, so when you get these, I did show everybody, when you get these, so this is the numbers, so I've not used these. They come with these little bits in, because when she inscribes them, you get all these little bits. So don't worry about those. So what I would do is, and Amy would probably kill me for this, just to make life easier, I tend to tip them out, okay? So I tip them out, and then anything that doesn't come out straight away, just gently prise it, okay? Don't force it, just gently prise it, and eventually it will lift off. They're new, okay? And we've got one here that needs lifting off. And there you go, everything is out. And then you end up with a couple of these little bits, okay? They're not for saving. Just make sure before you do throw anything away though, that you have put everything back in. So what I'm just gonna quickly do now is, I'm just going to pop all the bits that we don't need. So hang on a second. So we're gonna put the six there. We need the eight. We don't need the seven. And I'm going to give the other bits to Maria to put away. Give her something to do. Put the hashtag in. So anything I can get in now. So what do we need there, Maria? You even get the TH, the ND. So if you want to put second or you want to put third, you get the RD and the um, ND. So there's the ND, which is great. So, oh, good girl, Maria, look at you. Crikey, she's eager for this cake, isn't she? Yes. So let me just see, there's the uh, ST. So sorry about my sniffles. You've got the AND sign. Um, we've got the nine. So um, what's so good about Amy's um, embosser as well? She provides them in lovely, pretty colors. She puts them on a lovely pad for you. So they come on a, on a nice pad. That was the dog walker, I think, coming in, was it, Maria? Yes. Yeah, so can't get the number nine in there. I think I he thought... wants his cake. Oh, he wants his cake. <laughs> oh, he'll have to wait now. So uh, I think I might there. Have I put, yeah, put the nine in the wrong one. The six is in that one. 
Yeah. Then we've got the RD. What else have we got? We've got the five. So got a, and I'll just show you how much rubbish is left over so you don't have to worry. And we've got the three in. Which one's that one? That's the TH. And then question mark, exclamation mark. And then we've got, uh, we need 2018, so we've got the two, we've got the zero, we've got the one, and we've got the eight, which is there. So then we just got all this rubbish here. So all this rubbish here, don't save. You don't need it, bin it, just get rid of it. And then it's gonna make your life a lot easier next time you come to take these guys out. So um, Amy is a small company. She's a lovely, pretty girl from Ireland. Her and her sister have come up with this design, okay? It's her design. Um, I know that there's other brands out there. The saddest thing when you see other brands is, is that they've usually copied somebody's idea. And it doesn't matter whether it's got a patent or anything else. You know, the fact is they didn't think of it first. So I like to always stick with the brand leader. And you always find the brand leader offers you something better. So some people have said, do they come in boxes? Well, they don't. They come in a nice tray. I've seen other brands where they um, are not so pretty, the edges aren't cut so nicely, and they're also stored in a little plastic box. And as you can see yourself, when you come to choose them, when they're all in a box and you tip them out, you actually can't make them out. So it's really nice that they're laying a tray like this because if you keep them nice and neat like this, um, you can always pick out which ones you want. And to put them away, you know what? Just use a shoe box, use a box like this, get yourself a plastic box, you know, anything. Yeah, to pop them in. So we're just gonna spell Christmas, uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna spell Christmas. So we need the big C from here. So we're gonna use that one. I should have asked Maria to uh, get all the letters out. So we want Christmas, C, H, I have to show you I can spell now. So C, H, A, there is H. I'm just gonna get these out. So we'll just, if Maria can set them out in front of you here so that we can see. C-H, we need the R, 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 S. Is that the S? T, N, U. We need the I. We need the I. Just check and see if Maria could spell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> R, S, I, T, and then we need the M. M, A. Now we've already used the S, so we've got to use the S again later. So some of you think that you might need to use a tacky pad. So I'm going to have to do this upside down because I'm not good enough at the moment to do it you know, the, the reverse way. So just a moment while we just go in there. Just get some big moment. Right, so I'll paste here. So I can't do this upside down, guys. So I'm going to have to do it that way. Maria, can you see the whole cake there? Yes. So it doesn't matter where you start on here because then you're gonna turn it anyhow. So just make sure that you place them nicely. So we're just gonna H, so C. Is that the H, yes? I think it was Chris C, H. And we're going to do it so it looks like joined up writing. So R, T, H, R, R, and the I. And the M. Just making sure I've definitely got the M there. Just going to do the M. You are missing the T. The C? The T. C H R I L O T. Chris. Chris. Put that there. Sorry, well 
done. That was just checking Maria's spelling. <laughs> so, Chris. Mouse. Not sure if that M's right, but it is. Christmas. Okay. And then we need the S on there. So when you get these, do play with them. Okay. So we're just going to move these around. It'd be better if it was on a square board because that'd make life really easy. But I've chose to go on a round board. So we're just going to nudge these down into place okay Let's, where do they end there and a how's it looking maria nice yeah okay so let's just push that there and then we're going to do 2018 so i'm going to have a two oh, we need a space for the s there so we'll just take that over there Now, which way would you have your O? Would you have it that way or would you have it that way? I that way. That way, yeah. Yes. One, two thousand and eighteen. Okay, so we're going to get a piece of card. So all we're going to do there, I'm quite happy with that. So don't worry that that's not central because that is central now. So it doesn't really matter, does it? So we're going to do it like that. We're going to press this and we're going to put our drum on. We're just going to press it down evenly. You can press these as deep or as low as you want. Okay, I like to press mine deep, but you don't have to press them that deep. Yeah. And then we're going to take them out. Now I'm going to give these to Maria to put away. Just lose the little scriber needle to get them out. You can see the indentation. So there's the A. You can press these down really light if you want to but as you can tell I wear glasses and when I do them light I can't actually see them so the S I'm going to keep because we need to put the S over here so we're just gonna put the S over here because I'm going to press that down I'm just going to press that down with my finger so that one's in yeah Press the eye out. There we go. So I'm just going to press that down on the finger. I'm going to press it out again. Now, there we go. Okay. So you've got it in there, that's your cake. Some of you will be able to do it better than me, but I am just showing you live. And this is my second or third attempt at having a go. So I actually think it's my third attempt because I played with the, on the ones that I showed you last week, the first time, then I did it live for you last week and then I'm gonna do it live again. So we're gonna have this gold. Let's go and get my palette tray. Get my brushes. So if I put the brushes to one side, yep, there they are. Get the dipping solution. And I think what we'll do is we'll use this lovely copper colour. Yeah. <laughs> you like that, Maria? Yes. Copper colour. So should we use this lovely colour splash copper colour? And we're just using dipping solution. You can use alcohol if you wish. And what we're going to do is, so sometimes you might just get a little slick. So we're just going to brush that out. Don't worry if it's not really nice and neat. 
because as what you can see is one thing, what family and friends can see is another. Okay. So we're gonna use this lovely copper colour here. I'm just gonna put some in here as well. Now somebody told me last week that the trick with this was to make it really watery. So I'm gonna make it really watery and let's see how we go. So I hope you're enjoying this live. So I hope you're enjoying the live. Yeah, are you Maria? Yes, I do. Pretty good, what we like. So we're gonna use two of Amy's brushes. So let's get that one out of the way so you can see. So we're gonna use two of Amy's brushes. We're gonna use the thicker one and the thinner one. Are you dying to have a go yourself, Maria? No, no. no, no. <laughs> Would you like to come on and do it? And no, then somebody you. said, just pop it in and let it run. And you know what? I think they could be right. I think they could be onto something here. Oh, isn't that copper lovely? Yes. So what I'm going to do is, you'll see I've got two brushes in my hand, so I'm just going to use the wider one to do all the wider bits. And if you go round the edges or over edges, don't worry. I've just mudged and gone over one there, so don't worry. So I'm just gonna move this round. And then all the thinner bits I'm gonna do with the thinner brush. actually quite therapeutic this to be fair. I don't know if it's therapeutic for you lot to watch. Yes, that's why I'm here. Is it? I know you're really good you're really quiet aren't you? So I bet you don't know what to do with yourself Maria now you're not filming. No. Eh? Should we get Laura doing the filming? Yes. Should please. we get her being invasive and everyone say can you imagine when we go back and say you know what we're putting Maria on camera. We can swap. Sometimes. Yeah, she's got to learn all. She's got to learn it all, though, hasn't she? Yes. Yeah. Wonder if she'll be able to make videos as good as you. Well, I'm sure. Should we make her do them? Yeah. So I quite like this. I love this copper colour. How lovely is that? Yes. So we're just going to. So we're just doing all the thick edges at the moment. All the thick bits. I've gone quite deep here, so and it still works even though I'm heavy handed. So who's going to eat this with you Maria? Well I'm thinking to with my mother and my brothers. Yeah. Like is James coming to your going to your house or going to your father's? Um, well, uh, we share the days, so yeah. it's four or five days with my father and his family, yeah. and the other four or five days with my mother. Right. Well, we're going to Ireland to see John's family this year. We do it every every other year. So one year we're home with my children, and their other halves are with us for Christmas. And then the following year, the other halves, everyone goes to the other halves. It works out really well, really. Everyone knows where we are. So we all know if it's my year to go to Ireland, everybody goes off and does their thing. And lo and behold, if anyone swaps, because it just knocks everything right out of sync then. I have to say, this is so therapeutic. So I'm just using the bigger brushes brush at the moment. These are the Amy Sweet Stamp brushes and you'll see they've got this lovely little triangle piece. It really does help to steady your hand. And I am nervous because I'm in front of you lot. It's much better when you nobody's watching.
This kitchen smells gorgeous of that cake, doesn't it? Yes. The cake's in the oven. I have to say, it smells gorgeous. Well, I think you need to check out the cake because we oh, are... Do you think it's been in two hours now? No, but more than one and a half, yes. Oh, is it? Right, okay. Let me finish this number eight and then I'm going to come back and do the thin bit. I will say I think it's easier than last week making this dust more watery. Do you think so, Lord, uh, Maria? Yes. It seems to apply easier, doesn't it? Yes. So last week we made the normal Christmas cake and then this week we've done it suitable for gluten free. And I will go and check this up on in the oven in a minute. But while I'm on a roll, I feel as though I'm in a very comfortable position. So I think while I'm on this roll, can you see? Yes. So I feel like, so I can turn it around now. So in the brush set that Amy sells, there's two brushes and one is a number one and the other one is a, a three zero, a three zero, I'm not sure what that means but I feel that some of it's definitely going to need that little one in a minute. So let me just go over, just darken the colours a minute. Use the other brush now. It's a bit thinner to get in here. Very quiet in this kitchen, Maria, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Look at all the concentration. I wonder if the audience is concentrating. Let's just turn this around. Are you all holding your breath? Right. Because hey. it's beautiful. Yeah, I it's love this gold. It's relaxing to see it. So. Done. 
is, is there anywhere I've missed? No, I don't see. So, there you go, how cool does that look? That looks really good, doesn't it? Well impressed. Right, let me go and check my cake a minute while you have a look at that. With that now are we all happy yeah yes yeah and back a bit maria yes please sorry is that okay perfect so then we're going to get your cake off here so i am just going to put your cake which is the best side do you think that is the worst side so yes like that yeah and we're just going to centerize the cake from there. Yeah. That's what I like about you, Maria. That's the worst side. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst side. Right, okay, wash my hands. So let's start blinking it up a little bit now. So what we're gonna do is Oops, we're going to use some of the white. What we're going to do is we're going to use some of last week's decorations, Maria. Great. Yeah. So. Use a little bit of water. Okay. So these are last week's decorations. I'm just using them up on this cake. So I'm just sticking them on with a bit of water off my finger. On the back there. Can you see them okay, Maria? Yes. Let's just do this. A few little acorns. Yeah, you happy with it? Yes. A few little nuts there as well. Walnut over here. The leaves. I 
don't want a whisper at all. Mm -hmm. I think it looks really good. Yeah. So those decorations went a long way from last week, didn't they? I have yeah. to say that my cake is more beautiful than Laura's <laughs> cake. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> Well, it'd be nice if this Spanish contingency like it, isn't it? Do. Yeah? I think so. I also want to say that you decorate this cake in less than two hours. Yeah? So, <laughs> they will be like, oh my god. <laughs> Well, my mother even doesn't know how to bake a sponge cake. Does she not? No. <laughs> well, this is safe to joke, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, do you eat Christmas cake at home? Have you not had it before? No, we no. don't have that. Uh, what, what type of cake do you have? Mm. Do you have a cake at Christmas? No. No? No, what we have is after Christmas in January, Yeah. we have uh, something called Rosco de Reyes. Yeah. It's your big celebration, isn't it? Yes. What is it? Is it what day? What day this year will it be? It's the sixth. Yeah. Sixth of January. It's, it's it's the first weekend in January, is it? Yes, more or less. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's weekend. And yes, it's like the big party yeah. with all the presents. So do you not really do you not really do Christmas Day then? No. Well, yes, we also do Christmas Day, but instead of cake, we have a lot of sweets. Yeah. Lot of Christmas sweets. And but you give you presents then. Yes, but it's more money. Yeah. And the real presence is on in January. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm just gonna put these last bits of decorations on here. And I'm gonna step away from the cake. I've got some bit of ling to go on. So we have to have a bit of ling, don't we, Maria? Yes. Yeah. Okay, right, so turn my hands. So I'm gonna put some of this uh Magic sparkle on Maria. Right, magic sparkle. So it's edible this stuff, magic sparkle. So what we're gonna do is just put some in my hand. So can you see how sparkly it is, Maria? Can you see on the camera? Yes, we can. Yeah. So we're just going to just I'm gonna have it all on the cake here. snow this is crystal white from magic sparkles and uh, it really is lovely right so there we go so I think we're done so should I get that on a turntable so they can see it we're quite happy with it there it's beautiful. We yeah. can see it perfectly, even the sparkles. Right, pretty good. <laughs> so everyone, that's our Facebook Live today. Hope you've really enjoyed it. I have put the wish list up for you, okay? So the wish list is Carol's um, Christmas cake, but it's uh, for a gluten, nut-free uh, recipe. And um, please go over there and have a look at it. Do give it a go, it's absolutely delicious. And we've just decorated it with the decorations we used last week. So if you missed last week's episode, go back and see Carol's Christmas cake. Um, it's a very easy recipe. We've used the Amy sweet stamps and everything that we've used is in the wish list tonight, um, today. And um, there you go. I hope you enjoy. Please leave those comments and I will come back and answer them later. Cheerio. Bye. Bye, Maria. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>